In our last segment, we learned the theory behind geothermal technology and how these systems utilize the free energy that's stored in the earth to heat and cool a home. Now let's learn how these incredibly efficient systems can be utilized in both country and city locations by using different looping options as we continue with Brian Erlob from GeoComfort. Well, Stu, we're down here in the basement of this home. So what we've got here is we've got about an eight year old home with an existing furnace, as you can see right here. And we've added a split system geothermal to this old furnace. You know, as I look at it, you say to the old furnace, it doesn't look all that old. Eight years old, you said, yet these homeowners are opting to replace it. Why would they do that? Yeah, that's a great question. It is only an eight year old furnace. And the reason why they're upgrading is for energy efficiency. That furnace was maybe 92 to 94% efficient. Well, our geothermal systems are running between 300 to 400% efficiency. Now, how can something be three to 400% efficient? I know we brought this up in previous shows, but I still have a hard time wrapping my mind around that concept. Well, that's another great question, and it, it is hard to understand, but what we're doing is we're taking energy from the ground, which we already saw the ground loop outside. Okay, we're transferring that energy into this box. This box then intensifies that heat through electrical energy and compression, and then moves that energy over to the coil over the furnace, which then heats the home. So that's all happening at about 300%, or what that means is for every dollar you spend to run the electrical device, you're getting three to four dollars worth of free energy from the ground and then delivered to the home. Wow, it's a great system. And again, a great case in point of, you have an existing home, even if it's not that old a furnace, look into geothermal. It's gonna be more efficient, more comfortable, and really it helps our communities as a whole. Yeah, absolutely, that's really the biggest benefit. Yes, you save energy, you save on your utility costs, but the future in having energy security is really a big deal. And that benefits everybody, not just the homeowner, but our communities as well. Okay, I wanna get into the components here, but first, how did we bring the piping in from the loop field that we saw in our last segment? How did we get it into the basement and over to these components? Yeah, it's a great question because there's a lot of different ways you can do that. This particular site worked out well where we're just coming into the corner of the basement and then running the piping up overhead along with the duct work and down into our flow center and through the system. In other situations, we may be able to bring it right up through the floor. In this situation, we had the opportunity just to bring it up overhead. And you know, I didn't even notice that, but those pipes right there, there's two pipes, they're gonna be tied into these components? Yeah, absolutely. We've got one pipe coming in here and one here. So you basically just got an in and an out. And then what am I looking at right here? If it comes into here, I take it these are the circulating pumps? Yeah, that's right. These are the circulating pumps that move the fluid then through the loop field and then through the heat exchanger in the heat pump here. And then what we've got here is we've got the actual heat pump itself. So this has got a compressor inside. And again, this is where we intensify that heat in the heating season and deliver it to the space. Then in the cooling season, we take that energy and we put it out to the loop field. Yeah, a lot of people think of geo thermal technology being for the heating season because here in the upper Midwest that's generally when we're calling on our HVAC system but it does do equally as efficient job at cooling a house? Yeah absolutely they're excellent with cooling as well usually about twice as efficient as a standard air conditioner that's sitting outside on that 95 degree day because we're again talking about the ground which is about 50 to 60 degrees in the summertime. And that's another good point you don't have any of the equipment outside you don't have to be looking at it it's all self-contained right here. Yep, that's exactly right. And then what we've got here is we've got a preheat tank. And what this is really, anytime we're operating this system, either heating or cooling the home, we're generating hot water into this tank that's gonna help them with their domestic water use. So that way their gas system doesn't run as much. This is a more efficient way of doing it? Yeah, absolutely. We could take it right to the gas water heater, but because the gas water heater recovers so quickly, you won't get the full benefit of the hot water generator. So we put a preheat tank in, and then anytime this is running, it's gonna heat this tank and do it at its own free will. So then we've got this stored here, then that tops off the existing water heater. Wow, so as a byproduct of the heating and cooling of a geothermal system, by adding this tank, you're able to preheat it pump that over to the existing gas water heater. That allows that gas water heater to be more efficient, I would think, because it doesn't have to work as hard to heat the water. Yeah, that's exactly right. We've seen anywhere from about 50 to 80% savings in hot water usage by doing it this way. Okay, well, this is a great example. We get to see some of the split components in this system where it's a retrofit application. Why don't we head out and take a look at some other components that are available for different situations. That sounds great. Stick around, we'll visit another home that's using geothermal to learn how these systems operate with such high efficiencies when we continue with today's Home Remodeler.